Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 28th of June, or if you're in India Standard Time, it's the 29th of June. Grateful that you're here. Thanks very much. Uh, agenda topics that I have include Jenkins security releases that are coming and the impact that has on the weekly change log and the LTS change log, and then contributor summit retrospective and uh, what other topics would you like to include on the agenda? Um, nothing from my side. Okay. Nothing here. All right. Okay. Well, then let's. Uh, one that was on my mind, I'm not sure we'll get to it, but it would be I would love to have a chance to talk about the use cases and, and double check compared to the pull request. And the four, of, the four of us are probably as good a set of people to briefly discuss those use cases as, as we're gonna get. Okay, so Jenkins security release, we're on. So let's, let's note what that means. So no Tuesday weekly release this week. Uh, the release is paused, Actually, I awaiting the security release already submitted to PR. Sorry, uh, I, I've got my volume a little too low, Diraj. What was that? I, I actually submitted a PR for, uh, I just submitted a PR half an hour ago. <laughs> okay, uh, no no harm. That's, that's great. Uh, PR was submitted, but will be ignored. I didn't, didn't know about this. Yeah, that no no problem. This is a this is the first time you've encountered a security release, and so that's I and I confess every time we have a security release, they aren't that frequent. Thankfully, every time we have a release of Jenkins Core for security, I have to be reminded what it means and why why it means that why we do it that way, and and it's a good thing for release management from a release management perspective to understand why things are done the way they are. Okay, so. So the release job is blocked, it's uh, disabled. The weekly release job is disabled, awaiting the security release. The security team will build Jenkins 2.300 themselves on a separate branch. And the reason they, on a private branch, they redo that because if they do it publicly, they could disclose, prevents disclosing the breach, disclosing the, uh, the, the vulnerability prematurely. So they build privately. All right, so, and it's probably by this point already built. It is intense, intentionally, Um, 2.299 plus only the security fixes. So no other changes than security fixes in the weekly. And that's in order to reduce the risk to weekly users uh, of unrelated changes. It would be terrible if we, it would be a bad experience for the user if we received an unrelated change in the weekly that broke them and they were stuck with either having something that had a known security vulnerability or something that was broken. And so in this case, the better choice is 2.300 will be just 2.299 plus security fixes. Now, that means the weekly release change log, that's why the re weekly release change log. So Diraj, what I'd suggest is for your convenience, go ahead and close the PR because when we do, because the next weekly will have a much larger, a, a larger set of changes, right? It will have two weeks of change, two weeks worth of changes. Okay, got it. 
And we may have to do some special effort on that one to assure that we get, no, 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 actually we won't. Because the tool, the tool will, because of this change, 299 plus only security fixes and on a private branch, um, what you'll see in the branch history is all the changes that were included in this pull, in this week's proposed pull request, that one, will still be visible next week as being proposed into 2.301. Any questions so far, Diraj, or Meg, or Kristen? No, nope, very interesting. Yeah, so, so now let's talk about the LTS change log because it's different. All right, and it's different because the backported fixes for 2.289.2 are included in the security, in 2.289.2 security release. And that's because backports are more thoroughly vetted than changes to weekly and are intentionally chosen to resolve known issues. Now, one of the concerns I have is that the uh, the the docs the changelog PR has not been merged, and uh, I need to check with Daniel Beck with the security team tomorrow to see if it should be merged, or if they prefer to be the ones who merge it. Because what they will do. Um, the, the security team will combine, will create the 2.289.2 final change log, and it will be the current PR plus the security fixes. Any questions there? All right, then let's go with next topic. So Jenkins Contributor Summit, retrospective. Uh, let's see, so first test. Uh, Diraj, I know you attended because you were a presenter. Meg, did you get a chance to attend? It was at a terribly early hour of the day for you, so I assume you probably did not. And you're muted, Meg. Sorry, no, and I did not. I'm just hammered with some other stuff right now. No problem. And Kristen, I assume likewise for you that you probably Yeah, didn't. unfortunately, I, was not, I wasn't able to go because um, my day job has been taking up a lot of my time. Recently. <laughs> which, which, which is really good yeah. because they pay you for your day job. That's so that's, yeah. that's, that's how it's supposed to be, actually. So yeah, yeah we, we should not be complaining that we get paid to do our day job. That's, that's <laughs> wonderful. So, so Diraj, um, what I was thinking is let you and I go through, I would love to he hear your feedback on the experience and collect it. Or if you want, you could enter it into the document yourself. Hang on just a minute and let me find the document. And we'll bring it up just a moment. So, so for Meg, for you and for, for Kristen, we had some awkward and very frustrating technical difficulties because I didn't test the setup well enough before we started it. Ah. But, um, well, mistakes happen. And it happens, yeah. in this case, mistakes really happened. Oh. And they were my fault. And that's awkward and embarrassing. But OK, we survived. Oleg made it a great, great session, even with my mistakes. Oh, <laughs> oh, cool. What a team. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's take a, where is the original? Huh. Oh, oh, I know. 
Just a minute. Sorry, still looking for it. I need to get the real document. There it is. Okay, so retrospective link goes here. And then I'm just gonna drag it in and let's look at it together. Okay, so retrospective here was Yeah, okay. So what went well? Diraj and Aditya presented segments in the newcomers track. Thank you very much, Diraj. That was absolutely wonderful. You were audible, your presentation was well received, you uh, contributed to the other segment, other portions of the segment of the segment of the track offered suggestions to the attendees. And it, it worked great. Any concerns from you other than okay, it was a let's see on the what could we do better I'm going to put one here. Um, MW no. Diraj Joda next summit in the APAC in the APAC time zone. Same thing. So Diraj was up at what midnight and from midnight to two or 3 a.m. No, no. Uh, it started here at 7.30 p.m. and uh, ended around 10.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. around. Yeah, so very good. So uh, heroic beyond words to be on a Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Instead of being out enjoying yourself doing something, you were sitting helping with a presentation. Yes, excellent. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Okay, so what else could we do better? Yeah, so. And yes, about we can, uh, if it's possible, we can group a timing for Indian time zone. Right, and that, and Oleg's agreed with that. He yes. says, do the next summit in APAC mm. time zone. Absolutely. We, he presented a talk at a conference with St. Gitts University and the day, the Monday following and had 500 attendees from there in India. So yeah, absolutely. There's wow. a lot of interest in open source. That's so good because <clears throat> towards the end of the summit, I was, I was trying to have my dinner as well, <laughs> but turning right. on the cab. <laughs> yeah, well, and Oleg went like seven or eight hours without food through that whole thing. So same same thing, wow. right? Which is a good one. It's we ought to put a note. Um, MW mm. test the Zoom setup before the uh, summit to assure the parts and pieces work together. broke the Zoom webinar, stopped the Zoom, I stopped the Zoom webinar by starting another meeting for everyone by starting another meeting. Configure the breakout sessions <coughs> Before the meeting, Oleg had to configure them during the meeting. Any other comments, Diraj? Things that you think we should do better? Mm, well, well, I really loved everything, so there's nothing from my side. Okay. Yeah, I think actually one of the things I'd like to put on the went well is Diraj and Aditya actively participated in the preparation in preparation 
and presentation. Yeah. Discussed, improved. Great. Okay. So the amount of people that joined was a little, little less. So is this, is this normal? It was a much smaller set than we expected. Uh, as Oleg notes here, the, the first problem was we the communication channel we used to announce the Zoom link ended up arrived in many people's spam inbox. And so we need to use Jenkins online meetup and social media to announce the webinar location URL. Uh, the webinar is not susceptible to Zoom bombs, Zoom bomb attacks. Um, but we need to, we, we didn't share it widely enough. So this is a good point because even I was trying to search the link for newcomers track and exactly. And, and we had many people who were presenters who at the time the meeting was supposed to start, still didn't have the link. So that was that was a, a, a major mistake on my part that we, we shouldn't let happen again. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, I guess what I should note is the Zoom webinar portion worked well. Enough, yeah reliable, consistent, et cetera. Single person advancing slides worked well also. Those are all the topics I had. Diraj, anything else from you? No, but uh, the way you explain the plugin development and adopting section was really nice. Just oh, good. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, like it also convinced me to adopt the plugin. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, fewer attendees we we had from from what it was as few as as many as i think six attendees at the start so three presenters six attendees at the start to three attendees by the end and the reason was students in India uh, dropped off to attend to attend workshop to other tracks, right? And that's perfectly reasonable. We knew that would happen. And it was GSOC students, I think, if I remember right. But that was that was a smaller group. It made it, it made it a lot of fun actually to have a conversation with those three people about their various experiences actually. And that's a positive wide range of experience of experience and um, deployment for three people. Exactly. That was a really great discussion. We had one Kubernetes user, fully automated, one maintainer of an ancient plugin, ancient plugin on older environments, and then one between the two. And, and that for me, at least that was a really fun conversation because 
we got to talk about uh, plugin installation manager, uh, managing installations in general, managing installs with configuration as code. And, and that was actually for me pretty cool, Diraj, when you shared your blog experience. Sure. Yeah. So here we've got people who have been using Jenkins for years and the student who just started in, was it February or March that you first started experimenting with Jenkins and you were saying, oh yeah, and here's what I learned in this. I did this. Yeah. So. Yes. It's all because of you, obviously. Right, right. That's what it was. It's not that you did a bunch of hard work to figure, to learn JCAS. Yeah, that's, that was great. Well done. Very, very well done. Yes, I got a lot of help from you. All right. So I think that covered the topics I had. Anything else for retrospective? Yes. So one thing I wanted to discuss is why do students, uh, like there's a little less uh, uh, contributions coming from beginner students. So is it because they think Jenkins is very complex or something like that? Good question. So let's let's I think that's a that's a good one. Is it perceived as too complex? Um, is it is it unknown to them as a, as a uh, unknown to them as a uh, a component as a tool? I, many of the students at the universities here in the U.S. at least don't don't commonly hear about continuous integration as a concept. At least they hadn't when I was checking not long ago. Uh, what's your experience there at your university in India? Do they teach the concept of continuous integration or how to how to test your code more thoroughly? No, not at all. That is a good reason, yes. And and one of the things that I've seen mentioned in in the Jenkins in the Jenkins outreach group is that they're considering ways how do we reach into universities more effectively because um, Ulrich Hoffner is a member of the Jenkins governance board and a professor at a German university. And he teaches courses using Jenkins development as the lab exercises. And so the students are developing Jenkins plugins as part of their, a part of their work. He uses it to teach testing concepts, to teach uh, JavaScript. He, he does all sorts of different test teaching with Jenkins as the, as the component. That is very Good, good question. Any other questions you want to, or, or other observations? No, nope, nothing else. Okay. But by reaching into the universities, it's pretty, it's difficult, right? We cannot like ask the university to introduce a curriculum there. Right. That's a problem, right? Mm. Right. Well, and and Jenkins as an open source project is not going to spend tens of thousands of dollars to develop curriculum materials that a university professor could do use, right? That's we just don't have the funds to do that. And therefore we have to think about okay, what would it mean for us to try to reach to a university? Uh, and how could we how could we reach them without needing to spend tens of thousands of dollars to develop coursework that they would then teach? Right, got it. All right. So back to so see the notes we inserted there. Great. Okay, so next topic, and this one I suspect we need all, all of our all of our voices together is plugin installation manager tool use cases. So the reason I'm asking is there is an open pull request here in J on Jenkins.io for the plugin installation manager tool. And where is it? This one. And one of my concerns is I'm not sure we've got 
all the use cases covered. And the use cases I've reviewed, I was, uh oh, is that, that the right thing? So what I was going to propose is let's go through this, extract the use cases quickly, and then discuss, and here I can probably do it this way. So what I'm going to do is grab this pull request and let's find, okay, so here is this one. Sorry, one quick change. Okay, check out the PR. Okay, merge the master branch so it's up to date. Okay, and this is the one we want. What I was gonna do is grab the headings. So here are the use cases and let's talk to those. Which have we missed in working with Plugin Installation Manager? Okay, so back here, generate the list of plugins installed, seems reasonable. Listing, listing plugin dependencies, and I assume actually we probably want non-gerund form, right? Preview the installation of plugins. Install a plugin. Okay, any that are obvious here that we've missed? For instance, what about, I've got one that, maintain the plugins.txt file or update the plugins.txt file with latest plugin version numbers. Download latest plugins or download plugins defined in plugins.txt. Another one is download is, oh, what would you say? Oh, use an, an, an incremental build an incremental build of a plugin in plugins.txt. Now, this is how I do development with the Git client plugin, for instance, recently. So, Meg or Kristen or Diraj, any others that you say, hey, I would, I recommend this one. Does upgrade a plugin include reading the documentation to know what's changed? Ooh, it does not. Okay, that, that's a very good one. So uh, where to find the change log for an upgraded plugin? Good suggestion. Okay. And this is all for using plugins, not for creating plugins, right? Correct. This is all yeah. about managing them and installing new yeah. releases of them. Yeah. But okay, use with Docker, uh, creating a Docker image that contains plugins already. Ah, I've got another one. 
use with Helm, Helm charts. And again, it's creating a Docker image that contains plugins. Uh, okay, a custom update center location. That's an interesting one. Okay, plugin version formats is is there's there are defaults, uh, latest, precise version number, and then incrementals version number. And Kristen, do you know, is there any way to use snapshots? I haven't found a way to do it. Well, we, because as far as I could tell, snapshots aren't publicly downloadable. They're entirely local to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that there's an easy way to do that. Um, it might be an, an open idea, but I, it's not downloadable. So it's not going to be, or at least the tool is not really going to try to look at your local system. Right. Okay. Since you can't physically slap me from that distance, um, what about uh, reverting of updated plugin, rolling it back? Ooh, ooh, very good. Yes, that is an excellent story. Reverting. Let's see, reverting. Or rollback or. Yeah, what's your preference? Rollback uh, plugin I'm update. Easy. Okay. Right now, we sort of tell them abandon hope all ye who enter here, I think, right? Right. And, and this one, this one is a really good one because my default mode, um, is to not use this magic up this magic argument latest latest faults. And if I don't do that, it actually won't roll me back. So yeah, that's ah. an important one. Good. So roll back a plugin update is a really good story. Okay. And is there, does it get complicated? What if you have a plugin that has a dependency and one of the dependencies gets rolled back, but you don't roll back the plugin that's called. Ah, it? good. Okay. So roll back of a plugin of a plugin that is required by other plugins. That's the way to say it. Yeah, so it's, um, and that that one could be interesting. Yeah, so roll back, how about, how about we do two? Because that one, roll back a single plugin update and roll back a, a, an update of a plugin dependency. No, is it? It's not really multiple, though. See, I, I was going to say multiple, but really it is. Yeah, interesting. Good, good question. Very good. Um, are all of these use cases assuming public plugins that are in the Ooh, the very good using private plugins. Very good. And let's that's down in here. So he's got the topic already, if I remember right, which is custom update center, privately maintained, privately maintained plugins. Right. Right. Um, what about the issue of updating plugins on a highly secure system that does not have much internet access? Oh, oh, okay. That's a, that's a fun one. And I think the answer is you're out of luck, but let's, let's put it here. So, right, cause this does require you to be able to point at an update center. Air so gap. It might be good to have it as a something just like a mention. And then maybe we can come up with a, uh, a solution or like 
for it later. Does that make like right? I don't know if we need actually. That's interesting work. Do we need to have all of this filled in like for the first push or? Oh no, have, like... no, no. Okay, okay. No, no. Like, this, this is turning is... into a very large PR. <laughs> right. Well, and okay. and it's it's already a bit of a daunting PR just yeah. as it is. So so yeah. No, I I'm not I'm not thinking that we. My my worry as I reviewed the PR was wow, there are many use cases that are not covered here, but there's, that doesn't stop us from getting the, the ones it covers included. Okay. okay. It kind of looks like they've got the really big ones up there too. Well, and, and, and we probably ought to prioritize just to be sure, hey, or I guess we just take the ones we've got and note which ones are not covered. So air gap configurations right. is, is a really good one is, and the answer is not supported, right? Right. Or or air gap configurations require an update center reachable from the air gap from the from Jenkins. Right. Which means they have to if they're going to air gap, they also have to air gap their update center. Good. That's a very good story. Okay. So I think we had one already here. Roll back a single, well, no, where was it? This one. Yeah. Okay, the thing I'm wrestling with is I put these three things in here and I'm I, this one is not mentioned anywhere. So that one's actually could be useful, at least is for me. This one I think is already covered elsewhere in the, the body of it. I think we've already got it. And this one, I, I haven't seen it that I recall. All right. Any other, any other suggestions of use cases? Okay. It's a good list. Yeah, well, and, and just it's a good thing for me to use as I go through that, that pull request one more time so that we get it, get it covered and we can identify which things are missing so we do them later. Great. Any other topics we should go through today? Okay, then let's call an end to the session. Thanks very much. Dheeraj, Terrific. thank you again. Thank you very much for your help. Thanks, Meg. Thank you, Kristen. Yes. Have a great night and a great day today, Dheeraj, to you. Thank you so Take much. Take care, all. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.